Hi there everybody, welcome to Narrowboat Lockdown number 9, Alan Denman here and today I'm by this lovely old boat, it's called Widgeon, let's just spin round and have a look at it and um, we're still in Perival of course, beautiful weather um, and I'd like to interview uh, the owner of this boat, so let me just take over Alright, thank you, spin <laughs> this round and MJ, hi. <laughs> hi there MJ, Hello. so just tell us briefly uh, uh, something about the history of this boat, when was it made, where did it work and so forth? Okay, well she's an old work boat we call them, she was made in 1937, so she's now 83 years old, um, was an original cargo boat, mainly did grit and sand and gravel as far as I know, and was built in Northwich, she's at Yarwood. Um, they had different sizes and this one was the high side so it's four foot six from the gunnels down to the bottom of the water basically the bait the dream the draft or whatever we call it the boat which gives me a lot of um, space within it um, the back cabin was wood and the base plates they were always wood as well and I've understood and learned recently that in the 70s she was sunk and then raised again and renovated by a really really lovely man called Nigel who completely did the whole back cabin so this is now metal um, the inside maybe you'll get to see another time is been beautifully restored to what it would have been like to live in an old back cabin so a whole family mum dad and all the kids would have lived from there to there and that's it wow. that's all the space that I've had that's very cozy very cozy tiny little homes they would have dropped down a thing for their little table, cooked everything on a stove, heating was stove, hot water was stove. They would have actually drunk from the canal. And toilets outside, of course, compost, originally, as it always was. And then the engine would have been put in. As far as I know, she's always been a boat with an engine. So um, inside there is what we call a lister. Yeah, we sh um, okay. Then I've... Since I've had her, I've renovated her even more. So I've actually extended the living quarters, modernised them a little bit into this world, bringing in some facilities like a kitchen, a pull-out sofa bed for guests, and a shower, <laughs> and a oh, boiler. So I generally live off-grid as much as I can with the solar panels on the roof, as you'll see. So that's for power, as well as obviously with the engine topping up when we need to, to keep our batteries in good condition. Well, before we go any further, I do want to ask you, MJ, about lockdown. Okay. Uh, how have you found this very strange mm. situation that we have to find ourselves in? Mm. Um, what, what have been the main problems for lockdown for you? I think living on a boat, you probably don't come up against the same type of problems as living on land. I for example, have a certain amount of freedom in the basis I can step off my boat and sit on my roof and be surrounded by nature, I'm on water, um, we're allowed some element of movement, not very much, but obviously we do need to do our facilities, our rubbish drops and get water. I think the wonderful thing about boating life and certainly what drew me to it other than economy reasons was the fact that neighbours because we are on a boat, a boat isn't an easy thing, it's a dangerous thing sometimes. We make ourselves known to each other. So even from two metres, when I walk off, even though I'm on my own, I've got wonderful neighbours around. And we have a lot of support groups, WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups. But what I prefer face to face, especially as I'm on my own, um, you can step off and say hi. And that's, I think, a huge bonus. It takes away that sense of any possibility Sure. of anxiety, different mood changes, which we are all going through. Yeah. I think we're a quirky set of people as well. I think that there's an element of independence we're used to. I think that fact, um, through my own employment and work lifestyle balance, I am used to being isolated and in the middle of nowhere in different places. Right. So maybe I haven't, in some respects, suffered as maybe people who are used to doing a nine to five job, suddenly they're all stuck with their family in one place and they're not used to that. I think that I am used to having to get up and use where I live right. as also a place of work. Okay. So in that regards, I think um, those challenges I've already dealt with to a degree. Right. 
But you, I think you were already prepped for it in some way. You were used to mm. this lifestyle of being independent, being on your own a lot of the time. Um, mm. Yeah, th that's interesting to know because I think a lot of people have found it very disorienting. Landlubbers, that is, mm. people in flats yeah. and houses. Well, I want to move down a little bit because there's something unusual <laughs> about this boat, you see. Okay. And let's just go down here. And you can see um, uh, it's a canvas covering, and MJ is going to reveal what very special about this boat. So MJ, just talk us through then. So what, what is this about here? We're, we're looking at some sort of stage. What, what oh, is there we go. Well, just a little insight. If you ever went to Glastonbury and you saw the mini Ministry of Sound, well, I am the mini me. Here is the Widgeon Theatre boat. So I'm a theatre boat, and this is just a small part of the whole stage um, to be fair all of this curtain um, we take up when the weather is glorious normally yeah like a circus coming to town the troubadours yeah. style will bring you plays storytelling live bands comedy um, and especially encourage the boating community who are artistic a lot of people come together I run a bar when I'm allowed to um, open that up and everyone can sit down outside, relax, chill out, bring their picnics, hopefully buy a drink or donate to the shows that we put on. And so this is your lovely theatre costume. So it's my theatre really? outfit, hence the colour. <laughs> uh, I just want to chip in and say yeah. uh, that I've been to a couple <laughs> of your productions and they're unique, you know, uh, in different places. And you're in a very small space, but there's something very intimate about it. So yeah. there, there is something magical about a moving theatre boat. Now, how has lockdown affected your work on the theatre boat here? Enormously. Right. Um, so I might be used to working from home, but I'm not used to having no way of planning my life ahead. Mm. And I think that's been the hardest challenge for me and probably a hardest challenge for anyone self-employed yeah. or has their own company and obviously I have my own company yeah but not only that I have my own company that's on a boat and so I fall through all the gaps right. <laughs> because so we're not so all your performances that would normally Everything. have given you an, uh, some sort of uh, an income yeah. and also have helped uh, bring some income in for the performers as well yeah. and are other venues and affected in this way all venues, all pubs, but a lot of grassroots venues like myself, where our aim is to bring stages to people either in a solid place, but obviously mine's on the waterways. So the bonus of that is I can go anywhere that maybe other theatres aren't in existence. I can go and arrive on the water into a village or a town um, that doesn't have a venue for music mm. maybe or theatre or children workshops or we can explore the nature and the creative side of that and come up with some brilliant ideas um, so I can do that with the boat yeah. um, and it's I really think like the wandering mm. minstrels as well. going back to Greek <laughs> times and before probably where yeah. they would travel around with a cart mm. or something open the back of it and to put on a little play and move on We're, you're doing it on water I am and I'm not the first I have to say in the sense of bringing theatre to places via the water but I am the first that brings the theatre to the water and actually invites you onto the boat and yeah. does the play on the boat so right. there's two setups the main one in the summer from spring to autumn if the weather persists like this is to open it all up like a tent yeah. the stage is open to the audience on the outside so less intimate but a great way to bring communities together right. in a lovely kind of village fete, barbecue, picnic style Fantastic. fun. Yes. In the sort of winter months, we're then gonna get cozy. The canvas comes on, the stage breaks down, and I invite you in. Yeah. And there's a little small stage at one end, and I've had up to five piece band on there, like double bass, two guitars, singer. Um, so I've had lots of folk music, which, goes down really really well some beautiful violinists and singers lots of punk actually so i've gone from one extreme to another right. and all in their own way troubadour style 
and some great storytellers for children so they can come in and watch beautiful puppet shows nice. and the magic and they can sit and crawl around on the floor i'm not fussy you know if you've got a dog you can bring your dog as, long as they don't fall in the canal ideally yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that listen what no. can people do if people want to find out more oh, okay. i'm just looking at hashtag save our venue here so what can people do if they want to find out more about if they want to help me or actually any other grassroots venues to be fair either if you're an artist and you've got a song you want to play or even an, an actress and a, um, a whole story you want to tell please do go to saveourvenues.co.uk click on the artist tab go down and say you're willing to submit an event so that means okay yeah we're asking you to donate your time for free get that sorry we do normally want to pay you but in this instance we aren't able to and we want to survive so that we can be there at the end and be able to pay you at the end to stage your shows in the future yeah. so if you're willing to give us some of your time right now you then click our crowd funding link and with that help donate and keep the venues alive because uh, sadly they'll all disappear mm. um and it's um it's no joke we're the last industry that's ever going to be allowed to open and that means we've got to try and find that money for another yeah. three maybe six You're months survive this period and it's going to be the hardest survival i yeah. think any of us have ever okay. suffered so ideally we want to be there for you guys so if you can go to the hashtag save there our venue go, save our venue um, or go to my website which is widgintheatreboat.com or the yeah. facebook page and that as well will take you through to the crowdfunding link and if you want to support another venue it doesn't matter the pot yeah. is the same we've all written our own kind of targets we'd like to reach if we get that and beyond that goes to Wonderful. all the others so mm. it's a conglomerate a collective it's all of us mm. thank you <laughs> great well thanks so much for sharing all your wisdom your oh. experience <laughs> uh the history of the boat fascinating stuff and it is a unique thing you mm. know this lovely old boat here no, i've is. been on it many times mm. and i just think you know we don't want to lose this we want to all these no. alternative venues let's keep them going once yeah. again, MJ, thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs>